Hi everyone, so now we're going into the first topic in uh, topic 7, which is a uh, discussion about waves and light. And this is important because in order to understand quantum mechanics, uh, as I mentioned in the, in the first part of this uh, video, in the introduction video, in order to understand quantum mechanics, we really need to understand uh, properties of light. So we talk a little bit about the difference between quantum and classical mechanics in the intro video. So now we're going to talk about properties of light because that is what's going to get us to understand you know, some of the discoveries in quantum mechanics and some of the experiments. Um, the first thing to kind of just mention right away at the top is just that, you know, in, in, in terms of physics, in terms of understanding the physical world, uh, basically we can represent or model uh, everything that we see around us either as a particle-based phenomenon or as a wave-based phenomenon. And this is something I discussed in the prior um, in the prior video, in the intro video as well, when I talked about what we consider to be classical mechanics, which is basically that idea that, you know, everything around us could be represented as a particle or it can be represented as a wave. Uh, if it's represented as a particle, then we would use one of the Newton's equations to explain or to predict how that particle will behave. And if it's something that's explained by waves, uh, behavior, then we can use something called Maxwell's equation to explain how that wave is going to behave. Now, what we're going to talk about in this in this topic right now is just kind of what is what is a wave. You know, if you've never taken a physics class, what do we uh, what do we mean uh, by a wave? And really, kind of very brief introduction to that. There's not going to be any any kind of uh, detailed equations here, unlike if you were to take a physics class. Um, and you know, really, in terms of wave, in this case, in terms of light specifically, because what we care about is to understand how light behaves, uh, because that's going to have uh, very important consequences in understanding quantum mechanics. Okay, so let's now talk about uh, what a wave is. So a wave um, is really, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a mathematical function, if you think about it, that's represented by these type of um, structure, okay? And all of you can see that this looks like kind of wavy structure, and that's why they're called a wave. These functions, actually the functions, the mathematical functions that make up this type of uh, shape is your trigonometric function. So your sine or cosine function or a com combination of the sine and cosine functions would result in a shape that looks like this. So in fact, you can generate waves of all different types. Uh, by, um, you know, different combinations of, of sine and cosine functions. And as a result, what happens is if you model something as a wave, for example, like this, you know, wave of water, for example, if you're modeling it as a wave, what that means is really you're representing these, um, you know, this physical phenomenon of, of a um, water waves traveling as a, a collection of sines and cosine function. Okay, so that's what it means. Now, let's talk more um, generally about, you know, what uh, a wave contains, okay? So there's, there's three different things I want to point out uh, as far as the properties of waves that are important uh, for us to understand. Uh, the first one is what we refer to as the wavelength of the wave, which as you can see here is, in this picture here, is the distance between a peak, okay, one peak of the wave, to another peak. So that's referred to as the wavelength. Now it's possible also to measure the distance from a trough, which is this one here, to another trough. That would also be called the wavelength and that distance and this distance right here should be exactly the same. So that's why the wavelength doesn't change just because you're making measurement from peak to peak or from trough to trough. You get the same value. Wavelength has a symbol lambda, uh, which is shown right here. Uh, that's the Greek letter for it. The other uh, property that's important for a wave, it's what we refer to as frequency, probably a term that you've heard before, uh, as far as, you know, when we talk about radio frequency for your for listening to your FM or AM radio, uh, when you're talking about cell phone frequency, you know, all of these are, are terms related to, to wa a wave property, the frequency. Uh, and frequency is just how often a, a particular uh, wave, uh, same part of the wave passes through uh, same, you know, the, uh, passes through same point in space. So, for example, if I put a, a 
a um, a marker right here and the wave you know the wave travels as it go right now this the, the, the wave looks static right but of course wave travels and if I just put a marker right there and I count in one second how many of that same part of the wave passes through that'll be the frequency of that wave okay so if there's four of that same part of the wave passes through then I would say there are four for every second four per second okay four parts of that four cycles per second okay how many of the waves pass through for every second is what the frequency is so you see some values here for frequency uh, before I talk about those values frequency is given by this symbol new uh, Greek letter new it looks a lot like V uh, but it's actually not V it's actually new and um, the uh, the the frequency again it's is is a measure of how often some the the you know a whole wave passes through a particular point in space in one second so the other unit for it instead of per second is also called hertz hz uh, for the person who made a lot of measurements of of uh, wave frequency and so if you look at this uh, wave here basically it says frequency is one hertz that means that there's one full wave passes through that point in one second something like four Hertz you can see that that means that four waves uh, pass through in one second okay so if you do this as one second there's four waves that pass through eight Hertz means there are eight waves that pass through in one second time and so on okay uh, the third component I want to mention here is the amplitude which is basically the height of the wave from the baseline okay so you have a baseline here the baseline is this this uh, you know this this you see this flat line right here uh, that marks the baseline for the wave okay so from the baseline to the top to the peak of the wave that's what we refer to as the amplitude now that's amplitude in the positive direction you can also have amplitude in the negative direction which is to the bottom so if you start from the flat line and you go down to the trough of the wave that's also amplitude but that's amplitude in the negative direction okay so you have amplitude both ways but the value should be the same again uh, whether you're measuring it this way or that way so those are three properties of uh, waves that are very important now now I'm going to talk about the, the you know uh, specifically the, the fourth component of the property of wave which is the speed every wave has a certain speed okay so if you think about things that are represented uh, as waves like sound waves later we'll talk about light all of these uh, uh, you know phenomena have certain speed associated with them so the speed of sound for example is you know a certain uh, value about usually 340 uh, meters per second or so it's about you know a little over uh, about 1100 feet uh, per second uh, so that's the speed of sound and sounds are sound is a phenomenon that we represented we represent as waves in physics so so there's a speed associated with the sound wave light as you most of you know has a speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 uh, meters per second very fast the fastest thing that can travel um, and you know so different things that have uh, that are represented by waves have associated speed with them okay now let's go to the uh, uh, light itself so light waves you know just like any other wave this is kind of a general wave right but light wave itself is you know it's drawn the same exact way which is that it's drawn as this wavy looking uh, structure right and remember that this is uh, represented mathematically as a sine or cosine or a combination of sine and cosine function if you look here again this is the baseline of the wave and from the baseline to the top is the amplitude uh, and then the wavelength is the distance from peak to peak or trough to trough and then the frequency of course is how many of the waves pass through in one second now what we refer to as um, wavelength when we're talking about light is really the color of that light so some lights have red color some have yellow color some have blue color and you know other colors green and so on and that really corresponds to the wavelength so if you if you notice here this is red color it has this wavelength 
this is yellow color it has this wavelength and this is blue color and has this wavelength and as you can see basically what happens there is that red color has the longest wavelength blue color has the shortest wavelength okay so in other words color is really a uh, representation of the wavelength of that uh, light wave amplitude on the other hand remember amplitude is distance from the, the middle line here the baseline to the top amplitude is a representation of the uh, brightness of the light the intensity of the light so here on the right side I show you a couple of picture this would be what we would consider a bright light and this would be what we consider a dim light uh, because as you can see the amplitude of this wave this light wave is a lot smaller in comparison to the amplitude of this light wave.